we're going to start off with yellow. So get your primary yellow. Make sure it's clean. And we're going to cover the entire northern hemisphere in yellow. So fill in all of these wedges. Notice when I want to cover a lot of surface, I use the whole side of the pastel. So the pastel has three different surfaces to use. The side gives you maximum coverage. The face gives you stronger coverage so you can bear down hard and put more pigment in a smaller area. And then the edge of the pastel helps you to make a sharp line. So that's how you get lines in pastel. Now pay close attention to the wedges here. We're going to move to red. Make sure your red is clean. We're going to fill in all of these wedges, except for the blue. Leave the blue empty all the way to the edge of the yellow. So we're covering the southern hemisphere here, except for the blue wedge in red. Now, once you have all of these wedges colored in, take your red and scumble over the next wedge, which is orange. So you're just lightly scumbling. That's going to put some yellow on your pastel, so you want to clean it before you put it away. Next, we're moving to primary blue. Take the primary blue and strongly fill in the blue wedge, the one remaining wedge. Now scumble over the two wedges next to it in the yellow. Make sure you clean your blue, then scumble over the two wedges on the other side of it in the red. Actually three. In pastel, when you put down the color, it's called laying in. So we have just laid in all of the color that we need. Next comes the magic. We're going to be blending every color in the color wheel based on these three primaries. Try to find a clean brush. If you don't have a clean brush, make one by wiping your finger. Get the loose pastel off. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean, just preferably not covered in black. <laughs> now start by loading up your brush with pure primary yellow. So we're going to take the yellow 
push it into the tooth of the paper and get some of it on our finger. Skip this wedge and move to the wedge that says orange. Take the yellow, blend it with the orange and really combine this pigment so that you're mixing the red that's scumbled on top of the yellow and you're making a true orange. Notice that this orange is very different than the wedge next to it. This is a true orange. It's half yellow, half red. Okay, so you have orange on your paintbrush. Take that orange into the wedge that we skipped, the yellow orange, and combine it. You're just mixing what's on your paintbrush with what's on the paper. This is how you mix color in pastel. You can mix it with your finger by blending or by layering. So now you have true yellow, yellow orange, and orange. On your finger, you have yellow orange. Take that into the wedge on the other side of the orange that says orange red and blend it with the red. In your paintbrush, you're mainly just trying to get the yellow off. Now with your freshly clean paintbrush, load up on pure red. Pure red is the next wedge after the orange red. If you can't see any difference between the pure red and the wedge next to it, the orange is red, then take a little more yellow and scumble it over the orangish red. The orangish red should be one step oranger than orange and not near as red as the red. So you should clearly see a difference between these three wedges. Okay, so we have pure red on our paintbrush. We're gonna mix it in with the red violet. So go to the next wedge, combine it, and red violet will look something like a brown. Why did we just mix the two? So move to the violet wedge and fill it in. If the violet wedge doesn't look any different than the red violet wedge, then take your red and just scumble a little more red on top of the red violet. And that should adjust it. Remember the last color that you put on is the first color that hits the eye. So if you need to adjust it, you just put another layer on top. Okay, so you have violet, true violet on your finger. Take it into the blue violet wedge. After combining it, if it doesn't look any different than the violet, just add another layer of blue to the top of the blue violet. And you wanna have this wedge to be 
uh, one step darker and bluer than the violet. So it should be a little different than the true violet. Let's clean our brush. Isn't it fun to get your hands dirty? I bet most of you haven't had your hands dirty in months. Don't you kind of feel like you're getting away with something? Okay. So with your clean paintbrush, load it up with blue. Now with the blue that's on your paintbrush, move into the next wedge and blend really well. What we're looking for is a blue green. When you have a blue green, and this is a little too green for me, you move into the next wedge. If the two look identical, which mine do, then take a little blue, make sure it's clean, and scumble it on top of the blue green. So that way you have a true um, blue green or teal looking color. You want to make it like an aquamarine teal. and have it clearly different than the blue or the green. It should be one step between those. And now we have green on our paintbrush. So take that green into the yellow green, mix it together. This should be a very light green. And you did it. Now, in terms of the language of color, we use the three primary colors of red, blue, and yellow to mix all of the secondary colors of orange, violet, and green, and then use those to mix the tertiary colors of red, violet, blue, violet, blue, green, yellow, green, and so forth. In addition to this, and this will become very important for the last class, a warm and a cool version of every color. Now with the color wheel, half of the colors are already warm. Half of the colors are cool. When I say cool, you're thinking shade colors. When I say warm, you're thinking fire colors, heat colors. Each color has a warmer and a cooler version right next to it. So orange has a warmer and a cooler versions. Orange red would be warmer, yellow orange would be cooler. Red, orange red would be warmer, red violet would be cooler. Violet, red violet would be warmer, blue violet would be cooler. Blue, Blue green would be cooler, blue violet would be warmer, and so forth. So each color has a warmer and a cooler version right next to it. The Impressionists used this in their painting so that they created paintings that had a sense of color temperature where the sun hit um, on the trees and so forth. There was brilliant warm color. Let me see if I have an example here. In the shadows, there were cooler colors. So for example, this is not the best example, but look at these shadow colors. They're all very cool colors. Look at the sun, very warm colors back here. 
So you want to use color temperature to help you create more interesting and harmonious paintings. Now, another interesting thing about the color wheel is the opposite color or the complement is directly across from it. So the complement of yellow is violet. The complement of red is green. Complement of blue is orange and so forth. So if you start off with red and you neutralize red with the complement, which is green, I'm putting it right on top. Mix those together. That's when you start to get your grays. Now, red has a lot of pigment to it. So it's going to make a brown. But let's say you put a little bit of white in that brown and mix it. Put a little more in that brown and mix it. All of a sudden, you're starting to see skin tones. If you want to put a little bit of black in that and mix it. And there you have the basis of a lot of portraits. I, I teach portrait painting. And in portrait painting, you neutralize with the complement. So you start off by making mud. And then you tone it and tent it to get to the right value. So the way you get your grays is by neutralizing with the complement and then toning and tenting, adding black and white. It isn't a bad thing. That's a great